<laughs> hey, Lala. Hey, how are you doing? I'm really good. How are you? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I know that's probably a weird thing to say, but yeah, awesome. Yeah, cool. So how are you finding um, COVID life? Uh, a little different, yeah. Really struggled with losing my routine and um, I'm actually honestly struggling with having to jump into different job roles. So I have had to put my staff off for the time being. So each of them have very distinct job roles. So I've actually, because we all have our own desk in the studio, I've actually been jumping into each chair. So when I sit in Anna's chair, I know I'm doing design work and when I'm doing Kelly's chair, I'm doing production and then I'm back in my chair and doing my role. Yeah. It's the only way I'm to split my brain. So I've had to create myself literally a new schedule to work to to make sure I get each of the things done because a lot of the stuff would get done magically by my girls without me having to do it. So I've um, quickly realised I needed to write up Monday I do this, Tuesday I do this, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday I do this. This is my new routine for now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, but and so as far as wedding industry goes, like for me with bridal select cakes, like I have, I probably had about 25 postponements. Have you experienced the same thing? Pretty much all of it. It was literally like a massive landslide. It's like we took all of the work in the last couple of, like what was coming up and literally went like this. Yeah. Shut yeah. it off the side of the screen. Yeah, we did a massive spreadsheet um, to look at what, where it was being moved and everything else. And it's like this massive gap. And then all of it's been crammed towards the end of the year at the beginning of next year. Yeah, it's like like that. Yeah. But how are you finding inquiries? Are you still are you still getting brides inquire or is that um, off? Yeah, to be honest, not really a lot. I do get a few conversations. I'm definitely getting more conversations through Instagram about that and they're kind of soft conversations, just right. having a bit of a chat, but no real solid inquiries coming yeah. through. Not from, you know, some of my internal advertising that I do with Easy Weddings and stuff, not a lot of like leads coming through. And I think that's yeah. to be I think it's a little bit unrealistic to expect that we're going to get the same volume of inquiries coming through as we normally would. Yeah, I uh, agree. Even my brides who are not affected by this, and, you know, I'm talking about future brides who were always planning a 2021 wedding or 2022. Yeah. I'm finding that the inquiries are dropping, but also they used to be like they do their inquiry and have a quote and do all the things. And then the booking process was just the next step and it just happened. Yeah. And now I'm finding people are a little bit more like, can I just put a pencil hold on that? Can I just, um, yeah. just cause you know, everything is so uncertain. And so I it's guess it's really uncertain. It is. And it's uncertain for us too, as suppliers. So I guess, um, you know, one of the big questions I wanted to ask you today was about that. Like how, what do we do now? Like, how do we, um, when it, when we are effectively trying to sell ourselves and we use Instagram yeah. and Facebook as our as our platform, how do we do that in a in a climate that we're in, where um, so that we don't come across as being insensitive or pushy or salesy? What do you, what do you think the answer is? Um, I think. Well, my thoughts on it is that you don't want to be selling to people at this current time. I think that that's a really actual insensitive thing to do and it's people will see it straight away. They're not, you know, our consumers are very well educated. Mm. So if you're not being authentic and you're trying to be a bit, um, as I call it, wankerish and you're trying to kind of sell them something but mask behind yeah. something, else, yeah. see straight through it. So I think you just got to take the whole, I need to sell myself off the board and not use that language in your mindset at all. What you want to do with this time is use it to connect with them and start building a relationship with them. And you can do that without having to sell them. So show them some of your behind the scenes, be a little bit honest and transparent about what's going on. So you probably notice I've started, you know, really pushing my wedding planners and I'm being honest saying this is part of what will help keep my cash flow going yeah. um, and giving you free shipping as well. Um, so I think you can just be honest, but I think you really want to use the time to just connect with your clients, find your ideal clients, start talking to them because they're watching us. They're all on social media. Everyone is on social media. It's, it's astronomical. Um, we're on it even more. 
So, you know, if someone's constantly communicating with you, when you're ready, I always refer to it this way, when you're ready to get your hair cut and you've got to go and get your hair cut or dentist, whatever, you go to the first person in your mind, the last person that you used or thought of. You don't think about the person you spoke to six months ago. Yeah. Think about the dentist you might have driven past yesterday or the one your friend talked about. Mm. It's kind of us as well. So if you disappear for the next six months, when those couples are ready to start, like the, the fear has gone a little bit and there's a bit more certainty and they're ready to start activating. They've got to go to the next person, the last person that they communicated with. Mm. And if you are communicating with them over the last six months and showing your face and, you know, connecting with them and stuff, then you're not even on the shopping list. Yeah. I think for yeah. a lot of suppliers, um, like suppliers like me, who, uh, like we were talking about before in our conversation, that, um, like my product, my cakes is my content. So, um, you know, I'm not a big sharer of myself. I'm not a big yeah. in front of the camera kind of girl. Um, so for, for people like me who find that a little bit of a struggle to get out and get in front of, you know, like do an Insta live or um, do some stories about themselves, you know, have you got any- just froze. You know, <laughs> Um, have you got any? Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> well, we were talking about doing Madonna before. Um, have yeah, you, we did. Yeah. Have you got any tips about um, you know the type of content that people can if they if they're not like me and being able to produce the um, the product for their content? What are the things that they can share? What are the things that they can keep doing on social media? Well, there's two ways you can do it. You can post to your feed, which most people use their feed as a bit of a gallery and a showcase of their work. And then you can post the stories, which means that you have that instant connecting. People in mind, anything with video account content is always king. So that's why stories are doing really well. So if you can get on stories every day and just have a conversation with them, and there's lots of things that you can offer. You can answer the frequent asked questions in yeah. every one of our job roles in the wedding industry we constantly get these certain set of questions that everybody asks us yours might be how many cases it served what's the difference between a coffee serve and a and a dessert serve you know that but our clients that are couples that are getting married who've never been married before oh, don't know this information so answer the faqs do a live on it do a story on it do a post on it one faq only you don't have to whack all five in one maybe just yeah. do answer this one yeah. now this one so faqs ask um educate them as well about the things that they should be looking for. So if they're going to get a cake quote. What are the things they should be asking for in a cake quote? So whether they're dealing with you or whether they're going to get a cake quote or an invitation quote from somewhere else, what are the top five things they need to put into a quote so that they get the communication back quicker, how to put a mood board together. Um, and even just sharing a little bit about how you do things. So showing a bit of your behind the scenes setup. Um, even when something goes wrong, how you started your business, why you started your business. So there's lots of, like, there's actually quite a lot of, and you can even share the love. You can feature um, once a week or, you know, twice a week if you want. Feature another supplier in your wedding yeah. industry. Yeah, that's that you thing a lot. work with, you know, and show something beautiful off their feed and give back some love and do some connecting in this kind of way. Because we all know that that's a form of networking. And it also tells um, our couples, work with you know like yeah trust, trust. That. So, and that, yeah. that happened to me today um i put up something um a little pack of cupcakes one of my brides was supposed to get married today and obviously not and so they yeah. they ordered some cupcakes today just to have as a little token gesture. Yeah. and before i knew it alicia from maple and wren had shared shared my story get in touch with katie if you want a cake she's you know like and it's yeah. like there's no there's no expectation there's no um there's no kickback for her it's just out of pure genuine um respect in the industry and i think yeah. the earth's industry we we're so tight knit and we do have such great connections and we do know how to do that really, really well. And I think people need to realize that um, lifting somebody else up doesn't push you down the, the run of the ladder. Oh, you know, it actually, absolutely. there's someone underneath you as well, pushing you up too. So um, we're all in the same industry. We all have the end goal, which is to make our couples have the most amazing day ever. Yeah. It takes a bit to do it. And wouldn't we much rather 
have them do their business with us in our own industry in Perth rather than going online or bringing some from overseas or whatever. So why wouldn't we give a shout out to our favourite Kate person, our favourite florist? And there could be a number. You don't have to just focus on one. Yeah. But you've got heaps of content there already. There's lots of beautiful images on all of our pages that we can, you know, repost. And you can even go right back to the beginning and post. Of course. You know, you can yeah. go to yeah. 1988 cake, you know. <laughs> This is what they did in the 80s and this is what they did in the 2000s. I mean, I've got invites that I pull out from bloody 15 years ago that I'm horrified about. Yeah. Like, geez, I post. <laughs> yeah, I so know, it's, it's it. scary. But um, yeah. so, so I guess your main tips then for everybody at the moment is um, in order to stay current, you know, keep, uh, keep yourself present for your yeah. customers. Um, Take away the whole sales aspect and focus yeah. on education, letting your customers get to know you. So start to build that relationship with them because it is true. Once you've got a relationship with someone and that they get to the point where they have got that confidence once all of this lifts, they are going to feel a little sense of um, connection to you, even though they may not have yeah. physically met you, but this allows <clears throat> people to, to create those connections. And once you've got that, that's trust. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah and the other thing is that we need to remember that for a couple planning their wedding before the COVID-19 situation it's their probably one of the biggest investments they make in their life financially and emotionally as well there's huge expectations on it and they only get one good go at it so you want to engage vendors that you know, like, and trust. So if they're showing themselves and you have, like, you know, they, you know instantly what they like and you know that their personality type fits you or they're, what they're passionate for, then that makes that purchasing so much easier. And then when you add the whole COVID-19 fear and uncertainty on top of it, I think it's even more important now mm. to have the connection and trust, mm. you know, even more important yeah absolutely okay yeah. so um i think our suppliers are going to really learn a lot out of this i think they learn a lot out of you anyway lala you know you're um front and center all the time with your um business tips which is why you're the perfect person yes am i grooving no. in the car yeah i love that <laughs> I tell you what, the highlight of my day today was seeing your wake up hair. That was oh my god, primo today. <laughs> yeah, it is out of control. My, I can tell by my husband's face yeah. how <laughs> it is my hair. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's better now. Yeah, mm. much better now. All right, okay. Well, thank you for yeah. um, coming online and sharing that with um, everybody. My at pleasure. The and um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, stay safe, lovely. Okay. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>